the British Indian Army turns to make a stand at Moravian Town on the Thames River in Ontario in 1813. The outcome of the battle seems really to have been a foregone conclusion. By the time the British General Proctor actually stops to turn to fight, he's lost the confidence not only of his Indian allies, but of his own men. When the fighting breaks out, the British resistance is minimal. What resistance is mounted is mounted by Tecumseh and the Indian warriors. The final British betrayal would come on the cold, misty morning of October 5th, 1813. When, as Harrison's vastly superior American forces began their attack, the British simply abandoned their Indian allies entirely and left them to fend for themselves on the field of battle. You know, one of the more remarkable speeches given throughout American history, Tecumseh says to the, the British, look, you have somewhere to go, but we are standing here and we are fighting for our homeland. If you want to run, you run, but leave us the guns and ammunition because we will stand and fight. Listen, Father, we are much astonished to see you tying up and preparing to run the other way. You always told us to remain here and take care of our lands, and it made our hearts glad to hear that was your wish. But now we see you drawing back like a fat animal running off with its tail between its legs. Listen, Father, the Americans have not yet defeated us by land. We therefore wish to remain and face our enemies. Should they make their appearance, you have an idea of going away. Leave us the guns and ammunition, and you may go and welcome for us. Our lives are in the hands of the Great Spirit. We are determined to defend our lands, and if it is his will, we shall leave our bones upon them. And then finally at the end, you often tell great leaders in the way they react in adversity rather than victory. He knew that the British had given away before they engaged themselves. And yet, there is no question of him retreating. There is no question of him doing the sensible thing, which is to fight another day. He has committed himself to this act. He has said he's going to defend this land, and if necessary, he's going to die for this land. And that's what he does. You couldn't think in some ways of a more fitting way for Tecumseh to die. He dies in the final battle here for the control of the Great Lakes, and he dies surrounded by his comrades. He dies killed by the Americans. And in the aftermath, his body is mutilated so badly by Harrison's Kentucky militia that the Americans who know him can't really identify him. And with Tecumseh dies, of course, the person who has held together the Indian Confederacy, the person who has represented the best hope for Indian independence in North America. The death of Tecumseh puts, in a sense, finality on the American conquest of that area that what we know now is that as an American heartland is going to be American. There will be no place in there for Indian people. I 
think Tecumseh is, in a sense, saved by his death. He's saved for immortality through death on the battlefield. One of the great things in icons is to bow out at the right time. And one of the things Tecumseh does is he never lets you down. He was there articulating his position, uncompromisingly pro-Native American position. He never signs the treaties. He never reneges on those basic principles of the sacrosanct Aboriginal holding of this territory. He bows out at the peak of this great movement he is leading. He's there right at the end, whatever the odds are, fighting for it into the dying moments. I think one of the things that is so important about Tecumseh is that he is a person who, by his vision and by his personality, and the way he conducts himself gives us glimpses of humanity at its best, that in the most difficult of situations, in the most hopeless of situations, perhaps, people can have the courage to stand up and fight for what they believe in. Courage in the face of adversity. Tecumseh personifies it. Hope. Hope and freedom. That's, that's what I thought he stood for. And his, his vision that he had, you know, the way he looked into the future and tried to stop progress for, for the, red, the red people. For some people, they may have called him a troublemaker, and I think that's because in the end, he lost. Had he won, he'd been, you know, a hero. But I think to a degree, he still has to be recognized as a hero for what he attempted to do. If he had, you know, a little more help, maybe he would have got a little farther down the line. If, if the British would have backed him up like they were supposed to have, 